sir we are on line sir okay good evening one and all good evening and warm welcome for all of our uh, pure viewers fb group viewers today we are having a, a very good session it's mainly for the beginners who are willing to start the enucleation laser enucleation mainly uh, our expert dr tanushpal bhatia sir is here with us and uh, he will share his uh, vast experience on the laser enucleation of the prostate with us and uh, good evening tanush palbatia sir for accepting our invitation and joining for our session thank you sir. Yeah. thank you for having me yes sir so initially just i'll uh, introduce you and give it to you sir sure yes uh, naresh is today's topic uh, for today is uh, laser enucleation of the prostate which is a simplified manner which will be dealt with uh, by dr tanujpal bhatia sir from faridabad uh, sir is a hod and senior consultant urologist at institute institute of laser urological surgery at sarvodaya hospital in research center faridabad he is also specialized in laparoscopic urological surgery sandrology and reconstructive surgery and uh, sir is well known and uh, is also well was national and international faculty for rirs colep and all the laser surgeries sir is also well versed and experienced in variety of uh, lasers for uh, for other urological disorders such as stricture urethra bladder tumors congenital urological problems he has a privilege of using different laser systems holmium thulium relight laser and latest thulium fiber laser also sir has won the best laser video at usicon 20 2017 for a video on laser resection of the pcs tumors in a patient with solitary kidneys and also sir was also urological society of india dr sita raman memorial award winner for year 2012 and 2013 and also sir is also the one of the very few people uh, in india who mentors the juniors in mainly in the laser urological surgeries mainly rirs and also the holep surgeries I, i also had the privilege of attending the sir's uh, workshop for holep surgery in the last year after which we also started learning about uh, uh, enucleation of the surgery and uh, we are very thankful for you dr tanush pal bhatia sir for joining with us today and over to you sir thank you dr manas it is a pleasure as ever to be on this forum again and uh, you know just to talk about the immense amount of hard work you guys put into uh, pure urology i mean uh, it is amazing you had booked this date two months in advance so uh, that means your calendar is jam packed and you try to adjust everyone in between but uh, that's it's very good and uh, you know uh, i feel uh, educating and teaching in today's date is also effort which uh, not all people are able to do especially th for them those who are outside medical college uh, setting setting because see as part of the practice there is no obligation to teach but if you have interest you teach and those who teach they learn also more so uh, thank you for having me i will just share my ppt how we'll go about this is i will be talking about some basics about uh, laser enucleation in between when i talk about uh, the three types of enucleation i will go to whiteboard mode and i'll make some diagrams also okay so i'll just share my ppt okay so some of you might have seen some of these slides before so it might be a repetition uh, just uh, just a second my meeting in one hour sorry about that so uh, we will be talking about laser enucleation of prostate simplified why we have named it simplified because we want to show that this technique is simple it is not a complex technique you just have to learn the basic technique then you work on it and develop your own technique which you feel is going to be simpler for you so definitely there is a learning curve with all enucleations which is which is steep we do agree and that is why mentorship is important it is important that you attend some program where you learn how to go about enucleation and initially there can be some hand holding also which really helps one has to do at least 20 cases in a short duration of time to understand the technique one has to do at least 50 number of cases to master the technique the difficulties one faces are loss of plane bleeding and hemostasis which is not as smooth as it is with your volcatry 
technique of proper morselation it is important to understand how not to injure the bladder vision during morselation and risk of bladder injury so these are the instruments we use in our setup we have a simple indian laser working element we have the carl stroh working element this is what we prefer to use now this is our usual rejectoscope sheath outer sheath and inner sheath 26 french this is the morselloscope with the adapter which helps us to connect this to this uh, outer sheath and that's how you used to go about doing a morselation using this instrument which is the morselator blade assembly of course the telescope is used during the enucleation and it is a 30 degree telescope 4 mm now we have even thinner instruments available like 22 french and 18 french which is referred to as a mini laser enucleation of prostate uh, from dr philip pigardo and they are very good instruments i have used them a few times uh, a bit costly but if possible one should uh, acquire those and start using so when we talk about uh, hole up or tooth flap or any type of enucleation you start with enucleation and you finish with morselation so when we talk about enucleation it can be three lobe technique two lobe technique and on block technique in three lobe technique the laser incisions are made at 5 7 and 12 o'clock position and anti grade enucleation of median lobe is done and lateral lobes is done this is used for larger prostate with large median lobe in two lobe technique laser incisions are given at 6 and 12 o'clock position and anti grade enucleation of left and right lateral lobes are done and it is used for smaller prostate on block technique entire adenoma is enucleated as one piece this can be donut or other technique i just exit my slide share mode here and i'll go to white screen uh, white board here yeah. uh, dr manas is it visible the white board yes it's visible sir visible okay yes. so this is how we generally discuss enucleation techniques in our workshops also so let's take this as the endoscopic view of prostate okay these are the lateral lobes okay this is the verum antennum and somewhere inside is the bladder neck okay yes sir. now we we will first discuss the three lobe technique okay three lobe technique means you are taking out the prostate as three lobes let me just complete this also so just imagine the bladder neck is here like this and on this side also like this or the median lobe so this is preferred when there is a large median lobe and in large prostates okay so how do we start we start just like our TURPs. Many of us place bladder neck incisions before our TURPs. So similarly, we will do it for three lobe technique. Our first incision is from bladder neck till this point in in just proximal to the verum antennum. This is at five o'clock position. Okay. Second incision is somewhere here, seven o'clock position. We start at bladder neck and we come to the verum antennum. so they are anti grade incisions from bladder neck to verum antennum when we are making these incisions initially we make them on the mucosa and gradually we deepen them to the capsule how do we uh, know where is the capsule we will come to it later on during the presentation okay so once we have made the 5 and 7 o'clock uh, position incisions then we connect these two in front of the verum antennum when we do that what we see is something like this the adenoma lifts up and we see capsule below we see the horizontal fibers of the capsule and some of these fibers would stretch up towards the adenoma okay these are the fibers we are supposed to divide using the laser right here right here in the middle as we go on dividing these fibers this entire median lobe it goes into the bladder okay so 5 o'clock incision 7 o'clock incision then enucleation of the median lobe after this we come back to the verum antennum we turn our scope 180 degrees okay and we make a distal limit anteriorly because there is no landmark anteriorly we have to mark a limit where we have to stop when we when we are making the 12 o'clock incision okay so after we have made this uh, marking we go back into the bladder and we make a incision like this from bladder neck till the 
sorry from bladder neck till this marking anteriorly okay so now we have our 12 o'clock incision also all our three incisions are given median lobe is already enucleated okay after this we come back to the apex and we release the apex by giving what is called as early apical release incision sorry, sir. Sorry. early apical release we make incision all around at the apex okay then we deepen this incision till the capsule and then we go about enucleating the later lobes okay so first we take out one later lobe then we take out the second later lobe okay i don't know how clear it is uh, dr manas yes sir we can get you know we are getting because uh, you know it's different from a blackboard the real whiteboard but i have tried to explain no, so so we, can repeat. So we can understand yeah so i'll just repeat five o'clock incision till verum antenum seven o'clock incision till verum antenum enucleation of median lobe 12 o'clock marking 12 o'clock incision then connection of these all these incisions and enucleation of the lateral lobe okay that is three lobe technique now how do we do the two lobe technique two lobe technique is preferred when the there is the sorry two lobe technique is preferred when the median lobe is not very large okay when the median lobe is not very large we can do the two lobe technique how do we go about doing it so instead of making the three incisions that we did we make two incisions one incision is made from bladder neck till the verum antenna at six o'clock position the other incision is same like the previous technique which is made at 12 o'clock position distal marking here and then joining the bladder neck till here which is a 12 o'clock position then we release the apex and we combine these two incisions at the level of apex we go to the capsule and we take out the adenoma as two pieces that is why it is called as two lobe technique how does it look it will be something like this the later lobe and part of the median lobe okay similarly on the other side later lobes and part of the median lobe they would come out as two pieces because we have made one incision here at six o'clock the other one at twelve o'clock and we take out as two pieces when we do on block technique we take out the entire adenoma as one piece so for that we will either yeah either you place one of these two incisions the six or twelve o'clock position and there are different names of those techniques given or you take out the whole thing as one, which is the donut technique, in wherein you just place an incision at the apical level, and then you go about enucleating the entire thing into the bladder, and you, what you get at the end of procedure is like a donut, okay, wherein you see the prostatic urethra in the middle, and you see the rest of prostate, and it is floating in the bladder. The advantage of on-block technique is that it is faster. That's the main advantage. So when you are faster, your enurethra time is less. Even your morselation time will be less because you are uh, uh, enucleating the whole adenoma as one and you don't have to chase those different, different lobes at different times. Okay. So I'll go back to the uh, screen sharing mode again. I don't know how clear I was with that, but I tried. Let's see. Let's go ahead. Okay. So, as I said, uh, again, I will repeat. When, when do you prefer a three-lobe technique? When there is a large gland with a large median lobe. When do you prefer a two-lobe technique? When there is a small gland with no median lobe. When do you prefer an on-block technique? Mainly for the smaller adenomas. And most of us experts now like to do on-block more and more because it is faster and uh, of course it is to be attempted by a certain level of expertise only because you should know you should know the troubleshooting if you are not proceeding you should know how to correct that how to come back to the uh, normal urethra and make the amendments now for any enucleation be it whole lip to lip or bipolar it is important to understand the demarcation between the adenoma and the capsule so whatever you see as fluffy like here like here like here is the adenoma and whatever you see as silver shiny fibers horizontal ones are the is the capsule 
So that is how you differentiate between adenoma and capsule. Some places you might see some uh, small adenomas, slippery ones like this. So you should be able to identify them. If they are coming in your way, instead of going through the nodules, better to just stretch it and divide the fibers and try to enucleate these also. Okay. This picture is very uh, much classical where you can see the transverse fibers of the capsule and here you can see the adenoma. Just to demonstrate in a video, these are the uh, transverse fibers, I mean the horizontal fibers, uh, sorry, yes, the transverse fibers and some fibers they stretch out as the horizontal fibers and those are the ones you are supposed to divide. See, I am cutting right in middle of these stretched fibers. That is the play, best place to do and the advantage of laser energy is that it will be doing enucleation and hemostasis at the same time. So if you are in the right plane, generally you will not have much bleeding. Bleeding will happen generally when you will go outside the plan, plane only. Laser cutting is also better when the tissue is under tension, right? Sir? Yes. Yes. So some people, they ask us, are you pushing the lobe? So we don't push the lobe with the uh, sheet. We just lift the lobe. So and the place the tissue under tension and then we use the uh, laser cutting. Actually, any any sort of cutting will be better when the tissue is under tension. And of course, laser works well and I like to keep the bilate beam on for this purpose only so that I know where exactly my laser beam is cutting. So just reiterating here, I would be uh, in the video, I'll be demonstrating mainly the three lobe technique only, which I feel every enucleator should know uh, when they are starting to do enucleation. So first incision, see this is the median lobe, these are the lateral lobe, there is always a, a natural group between the two, which is at around 5 o'clock and that is where we start the incision at the bladder neck and we come till the verumontanum. Then we place the 7 o'clock incision, this is the median lobe, this side is the lateral lobe, we place the incision, see this is the laser fiber, the beam is on. And then we go about lifting the median lobe, we can see the Capsule here, silvery, we can see the adenoma, fluffy, we can see some fibers are stretched and we can see the beam is right in middle of these fibers. And this is our previously placed 5 o'clock incision, this is the 7 o'clock incision and here we are lifting off the median lobe. And then we come back to Veru, we rotate the scope, we make a marking distally and then we make this 12 o'clock incision. Again, here also you can see the capsular fibers and the adenoma fibers. Now, once you're done with all these three incisions and enucleation of median lobe, we come back to the uh, veru and we release the adenoma from the sphincter. Yeah. So this is how we go about uh, doing the apical release. We start our incision at uh, six o'clock. We go till three o'clock position. You can see the hand movements also. These are important. And then we come from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So as these two are joined, the adenoma is kind of released from the uh, sphincter. How this helps is that it prevents stretch on the sphincter during the enucleation, which in turn prevents our stress incontinence. Okay. So that is the apical release or early apical release. Once we have made these incisions, we deepen the same incision till the capsule and we go about enucleating the left lobe first and the right lobe next. Okay. And then all the three lobes go into the bladder and we go ahead with morcellation. There are uh, three things which are important for uh, morcellation. Number one, the excellent, the hemostasis should be excellent. Number two, the bladder should be kept full. Both the inlet should be open. The outlet should be closed. And the assistant should always be uh, checking on the suprabubic area that the bladder is full. And in the beginning, never hurry for morcellation. You know, it's okay to do it slow, under vision and with a good vision. So slow and steady wins the race. We know that. Now, just a video demonstrating the uh, three lobe technique step by step. Cystoscopy is must. Once we go in, we identify the landmarks, we see where the veru is, we look at both the ureteric orifices, we always keep in mind where exactly our orifices are and whenever in doubt, we go in again and we have a look at the orifice. This is about 1.5x uh, speed, so 
you might find it a little fast. So now you can see the five o'clock uh, bladder neck incision being made from the bladder neck till the veromontanum. You can see the fibers there, the transverse fibers near the bladder neck. Now the seven o'clock uh, incision is being made from bladder neck till veromontanum. Again, this incision is deepened till the capsule. Then these two incisions are joined. One can uh, place this particular incision beforehand also, uh, just at the beginning of procedure, because this is one place where you can identify the capsule very nicely. And as we join these two incisions, we go about enucleating the median lobe. You can see the median lobe being enucleated there. Gradually, you are reaching towards the bladder neck. This is not my actual speed. This is 1.5x. So those are the last mucosal attachments. They are released and the median lobe goes into the bladder. Now we rotate the scope. We make a distal limit uh, anteriorly. We mark a distal limit because we don't have any landmark like Veru here. And then we make the 12 o'clock incision from bladder neck till this particular marking. Again, you can we have to go as deep as the capsule. You can see the capsular fibers nicely there. Now we have to release the apex. We have seen this video earlier also. We go from 6 o'clock to 3 o'clock on left side. Then from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock position at the apex. This is where the uh, rotating movement of uh, sheath gives us the advantage. We connect these two. Then same thing is done on the other side from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock position. And then from 12 o'clock to 9 o'clock position. So by doing this, the entire adenoma is released from the uh, external sphincter. Now we deepen the same incisions. Same incision is deepened till the capsule. Even if you see some bleeding, don't worry. Either you can coagulate it or if you're not able to coagulate also, when as you deepen it and reach the correct plane, the bleeding would generally stop. You can appreciate when the plane is correct, the bleeding is very minimal. Now we go about enucleating the lobe. So we, I generally start with the left lobe. We go from below above. And the typical blanching you can see, that is uh, what I like to see. The blanching around the beam. I feel that is the right distance when we are doing enucleation. So we go from below above and we come from above below. That's how we connect these two incisions. So here you can say that I am connecting the 5 o'clock incision to the 12 o'clock incision in a way. So we go about enucleating the lateral lobe. Here I am enucleating the left lateral lobe. You can see those are the last few fibers. You stay on the capsule, you divide the fibers, it go, adenoma goes into the bladder. Again, you can appreciate there's very less bleeding. Now we go about enucleating the right lobe. Again, first from below above. Sir, uh, Tanush sir. Yes. Sir, just can you pause here? Sir, Is here, most of, the, uh, most of the time when we, uh, we see that this adenoma on the one, uh, will be a little bit extending distally uh, crossing the veru, then where will it take this uh, incision, sir? So what we do is we go along the contour of the prostate. Okay. Okay. Of course, you don't want to come too much behind. The incision is made just along the contour. Once we have made the incision, we one uh, and we are enucleating. Then we go behind the sphincter. Okay. You know, like we do apical resection and TURs, we go behind the sphincter and we sort of scoop it out. Here we go behind the sphincter and we enucleate. And uh, am I right that if uh, even though in the uh, the floor, if we come a little bit uh, about five mm distal to the vero, it doesn't cause much problem to the sphincter. Yeah, yeah, see, no problem. Ultimately, see. when we are doing enucleation, the main purpose is to take out as much tissue as you can. Actually, you want to take out the entire adenome. Okay. And uh, once you have made the incision, the, the apical release incision is actually superficial incision. And you could deepen it till the capsule in a slant way, in a, it is oblique, it is not straight. Okay. Okay. 
and then once we have reached the correct plane then we go uh, all around so that way you will be saving the sphincter in most of the cases one more thing that is important is when we are making that distal marking anteriorly at that time we keep uh, the laser fiber a little ahead because that is where the bulk of sphincter is if you have saved that part and if you have saved that horseshoe shape yeah. structure then your your continence rates will be good okay i mean the, most of the sphincter will be mainly in the anterior arch yes. upward yes so that even though it come little bit distally in the floor we will not be damaging much of the sphincter yes. yes you will not be damaging yeah. thank you sir so here we are seeing the right lobe being enucleated we go from below above and then we come from above below you can see this is the fluffy adenoma this is the capsule gradually you reach the bladder neck area stay on the capsule keep on enucleating so you might feel that the tissue is less but, but actually most of the tissue is hanging there inside the towards inside the bladder so when you look when you when you are enucleating you will always see the bulk i mean when it's detached so you go about uh, again further towards the bladder neck so i like to keep these little lobes attached right in the middle around 9 o'clock position instead of either two anteriorly or two uh, towards the floor and then it goes into the bladder so those are the floating lobes all the three lobes one was large two were small lobes and then we go about morselation now again i will uh, just show you this is our inlet okay the inlet is open the outlets are closed okay some people like to attach two inlets also but i feel uh, one is enough of course you can open both the bottles they uh, that could increase the pressure to some extent bladder is nicely distended there is no bleeding here so the vision is good that is very important at the end of enucleation <coughs> better to go in and uh, do some nice hemostasis even if in the beginning even if you need to take a cautery don't shy away from taking a cautery because uh, hemostasis has to be good for a good morselation if you are not seeing clearly you will not be able to do good hemostasis so yeah so we go about uh, morselating this is the normal morselation this is with the luminous morselator when we press half it sucks the lobe it catches it when we press completely it starts cutting it and sucking it out leading to morselation sometimes towards the end there can be some slippery nodules which would keep slipping so you can just invert the morselator and you can uh, uh, again suck and the uh, morselate it some people believe it is safer also because the posterior wall is a fixed structure uh, then there is another trick if it is still not coming out you can come to the fossa uh, you can suck come bring it bring the adenoma to the fossa and then morselate it there so how do we do hemostasis during holep it is mainly by defocusing using uh, the laser which i have i have a single pedal laser if you have a laser with two circuit settings you can use keep both settings uh, enucleation and uh, coagulation settings and you can use the coagulation setting uh, but even with the machines with two pedal when i operate i like to use defocusing only wherein if i when i am enucleating if there is a bleeding i would just come a little uh, behind and i would fire there what it leads to is lesser amount of energy being delivered and which in turn leads to hemostasis also sometimes there can be a little bit of tissue around the bleeder so <laughs> just try to you know sort of uh, evaporate that tissue and you will that tissue and you will see the bleeder and you coagulate it what will be your main uh, for enucleation settings or uh, incision settings to uh, enucleation settings laser setting two joules yeah. yeah no 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 i don't go to two joules so my most favorite setting is 1.2 joules and 50 hertz 95% of my cases i use 1.2 joules 50 hertz which comes to 60 watts and sometimes if the adenoma is very big or if i feel the energy is being less of the tissue characteristics also matter then i would go to 1.5 g joules and 50 hertz never ever i think i have ever gone beyond 1.5 joules okay yes uh, this is with holmium laser 
so this is very important how to prevent undermining of bladder neck see when we are doing the median lobe enucleation we are doing a retrograde enucleation so there is always a chance you can go under the bladder neck and under the trigone so you can cause subtrigonization that should be avoided how to avoid it is you whenever in doubt you go inside the bladder neck and come towards the adenoid instead in in that part instead of uh, you know blindly enucleating 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 just go inside the bladder neck start dividing from there and come towards the uh, more distally that way you will prevent the uh, enucleation one most part once you have done most part near the bladder neck on both sides like that then last part you can do the retrograde enucleation now when there is a large median lobe and orifice is not visible you know most of the times if you make some effort the orifice might become visible but sometimes despite uh, all your efforts the orifice may not be visible so what we do in those, that case you just give a little bit of incision as you go on deepening the incision the bladder neck sort of retracts the orifice also retracts and you will be able to see in most of the cases very very rarely it will be so that you are still not seeing and then at the end of median lobe enucleation you will be able to see but it is always better to make an effort and try to see where the ureteric orifice is because if you uh, fire at the ureteric orifice with the laser then there are chances of stenosis and uh, ureteric obstruction so it is better to be careful uh, with laser with the ureteric orifice better to see it as in this case you know after making the incision uh, we were able to see the ureteric orifice before making the incision we were not able to see the ureteric orifice see after making the incision we are able to see it before making the incision we were not able to see the ureteric orifice <coughs> and then we deepen the incision further and we do it more confidently sometimes as i mentioned in beginning there might be bleeders which are uh, you are not able to do hemostasis with laser because see hemostasis with laser is not as good as it is with the cautery so you try to uh, coagulate it and you will usually see those vessels during enucleation instead of you know sputters like you see in uh, trp you will see the vessel so ideally you are supposed to fire over the vessel and coagulate it but sometimes it may just not stop so if that is happening just leave it there go to a different area uh, where you are doing the enucleation try to correct the plane most of the times bleeding will be there because you are in the right uh, wrong plane either you are too outside or you are too inside so try to correct the plane try to come from the correct plane to this area and when you are done with the enucleation you will see that the bleeding has stopped even if you are not able to do it at that time and you see that some bleeding is there again i would say there is no harm there is uh, no shying away from taking a cautery and doing the coagulation because it is very important to have good hemostasis to do a, a good morselation because if the vision is not good you can cause a bladder injury what do you do if there is a capsular operation or this is uh, you know as you become more and more experienced the chances of capsular operation increase i feel see there while enucleating itself there is a you know it's it seemingly big uh, capsular operation but with laser you need not worry generally these uh, operations are very superficial because you are not scooping out tissue like you are doing with tur so you are seeing some fat there but actually it's not such a deep uh, perforation after that what you have to do is again you have to correct the plane uh instead of going deeper again just go superficially like you will see here now i will not go in that area what i will do is i will change the plane i will go to a more superficial area see like that okay instead of digging in deep and deep correct the plane and rest of the enucleation just try that you don't go that deep again because see as enucleators we want to take take out as much tissue as possible so in that attempt or in that uh, greed we tend to go uh, deeper but uh, we should know when we have gone outside and we should also know how to correct the plane so uh, here i have collected the plane and then i have gone about the rest of left lobe enucleation so i would end my talk with that and i would be happy to answer any questions
Thank you, sir. Thank you for crisp presentation, sir. Thank you. So, for, for beginners, what are the tips you advise, sir, uh, whether to start now? Uh, uh, you have told briefly about the uh, laser inoculation. Yes. Uh, as a present for all the newer new beginners, we have a wide range of uh, lasers, sir. Whole yes. mayhem, high power, low power, TFL, yes. and uh, new generation tool lame YAG lasers are also coming. Just one second, Automanas. Just give me one, one important call. Just a second, please. Yes. I'm really sorry. I had to take this. No, sir. sir. Yeah. So, with the different varieties of lasers, you were saying. For a new beginner who wants to are very very who is very eager uh, uh, to start the enucleation and after seeing all the seniors doing enucleation, when yes. he wants to start the enucleation, which laser you would advise him, sir, to start with the whole left, to flip, to left. See, uh, we have to understand it is the man behind the machine which is more important than the machine itself. And the same thing we have to tell to all these company people who keep telling, coming to us and keep telling us advantage of this machine, that machine. Next, you have to see what your suits your pocket. You know, you can do a good job with a litman uh, stethoscope and uh, equally good job with a uh, normal stethoscope, which is available cheap also. But you should, you should know that technique. You should know what to do, what to see, what to, you know, what you have, what you have to do. So. Uh, the technique is more important. That is why uh, my talk also today was more focusing more on the technique rather than what type of laser. Uh, given a choice, if your pockets allow and if you are, uh, um, you know, if you want to do a, uh, if from a, from a uh, enucleator's eye, if you want to do a very good enucleation, uh, you know it well that I still root for Holep. Uh, I believe for enucleation still uh, holmium laser uh, is the best. If, you know, if I have those uh, two or three machines kept and I have to choose one, I will choose Holep. Uh, having said that, I have seen even thulium fiber enucleation in, in hands of Holep surgeon uh, looks very good. So anybody who has done Holep for five years, six years, 10 years uh, would do a good job with a thulium fiber laser also because he will try to be in the same plane. A uh, problem is when you get a thulium fiber laser and you, without any major mentoring, you try to do an enucleation. You will be able to do it because you might feel it's very easy because, uh, you know, thulium fiber laser is a very good coagulating laser. So it would, it would cut the tissue like a cheesecake and you would feel that you have done a great job. But actually what you would have done without mentoring is that you would have uh, made a channel and uh, not a real enucleation. Because there is there is some charring, we know that. So you have to understand what are the settings, uh, what is the best way, what is the exact distance to keep the fiber so that we can achieve a good enucleation with a capsule on one side and adenoma on the other. How we can compensate is that we can uh, do some vaporization towards the end uh, with whatever tissue is uh, remaining. And gradually by doing more and more, one can learn. How to start about uh, learning enucleation, I would advise that every TURP that you do, you give the bladder neck incision with the laser. Every TURP you do, you grab the bladder neck incision with the laser. It will give you two benefits, rather three. Number one, your bleeding will be less for the rest of the procedure. Uh, number two, you learn the technique of giving a bladder neck incision with laser to getting into the right plane. Number three, even your rejection will be better because the plane you achieve with the laser BNI will be excellent. So the tissue you will be removing after this laser BNI also will be uh, more. And then once you have learned how to give the incision, how you have learned to reach the capsule, you start by enucleating, in the same cases, you start by enucleating the median lobe. Okay, five cases, 10 cases, you just do uh, laser BNI followed by median lobe enucleation. Rest of prostate you do by TUR. And see, if you divide into five, five, five cases like that, by end of 15th case, you will be ready to do a complete enucleation. Great, sir. And uh, since you have been mentoring a lot of juniors sir, from the last uh, four or five years, we have been seeing you. Hello. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yeah, your voice was yeah. Can sir? you repeat the question? Yes. Yes, sir. sir, sir. Again, I've lost you. Hello. Hello. Uh, I lost you again for some reason. 
Yeah. No, no, I'm audible, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, sir, what is the most common uh, doubt and most common uh, difficulty that all the juniors say asks you, sir? Uh, what uh, since you have been seeing so many juniors who have been mentored uh, by you, and after they go, after seeing you uh, in your uh, setup in your workshop, and they go home and they start doing the enucleation. Then yes, what sir. will be the most common uh, doubt or uh, query they ask you uh, in their uh, in the first few cases, sir? It's not a doubt I get. What I get is a fear. Yeah. People uh, tend to stay more superficial or uh, trying to stay, somehow trying to stay away from the capsule. But we have to understand that we have to go till deep till the capsule. Only then our planes will be good, our bleeding will be less. The biggest fear or the biggest doubt is losing the uh, plane. And the easiest way to solve that is by going to the correct uh, place. So suppose I am enucleating uh, from uh, 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock position on left side and I enter a wrong plane. Either I am into the tissue or outside. How do I correct it? Then I come from above below, from 12 o'clock position where my plane is better defined. I come from there till uh, uh, 3 o'clock position. Sorry. Uh, yeah. For left side. So that I come towards the lateral side and I try to reach that place from above below and I will then automatically correct the plane. <clears throat> and once the two are connected, you go about okay, yeah. enumerating. Always, so from, always from known to unknown area. That is important. I still remember your words, this word, sir. You used to say, always go from known to unknown. Yeah, that's, yes, I've also learned by <laughs> doing uh -huh. and of course I had a great mentor also. So... Um, and uh, who who are your your great man, mentors, sir? Actually, see uh, if I talk about my Holep journey, uh, my interest in Holep started from the days of uh, my training itself, or uh, during my uh, DNB urology when you know at conferences I used to see uh, uh, Dr. Vashne sir, uh, even Dr. Rohit Joshi and others talking about Holep. Dr. Pankaj Maheshwari, we used to see those videos and it used to. Uh, seem like a very nice modality to treat prostate and very fancy as well. You I'm know, fine. when you compare it with the TORP where you see bleeding, 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 and he bleeding hemostasis, bleeding hemostasis, all that. So uh, there was interest uh, from there. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, my center did not have a high power laser. After that, also, I joined a government setup where we did not have, but after that, I joined uh, Fortis Shalimar Bagh and I worked under Dr. Rajinder Yadav. And he was a very supportive uh, senior and they had a high power laser and uh, sir taught me the uh, basics and uh, encouraged me to take this up. And uh, we, I, that is where I learned uh, Holep. Uh, and then when I came to this center, uh, when my current hospital uh, was inviting me to join, I told them my main area of interest is lasers and then they got the high power laser. And uh, from that day on, uh, I did more and more uh, follow-ups. See, uh, what I would advise is, you know, do not limit your indications. Of course, you have to go by the textbook. But you have to do a good number of cases in a short period of time. If you do one case today and then another after one month, you will not be able to understand the technique. So you have to do the cases frequently. So you have a 40 gram prostate patient is taking leukosprin 75, do a whole lip. Why do you want to do a TURP for them? So the, those are the cases you pick up initially. Then you can even do patients, you know, more than 70 gram prostate or somebody who's on 150 uh, mg leukosprin, somebody who's on uh, a warfarin and you have to bridge him with heparin. So those are the cases where it is ideally suited. But before taking up those challenging cases, do some simple cases, do relatively smaller glands, don't do very small glands. Don't do very large lands and you will understand the technique and you can master it and see the biggest benefit of Holep is the result. The flows that you get with enucleation, you do not get with the rejection techniques and this is proven. So, and the patient also, he will be so happy with the flow, you know, after his uh, adulthood, after so many years, as his prostate gradually <coughs> enlarged and the flow gradually decreased, decreased, decreased. Now he's getting such good flows. They are really uh, relieved. Even it is proven now that even the sexual performance uh, is better after the surgery. Because, uh, you know, there is no fear of that leakage and all that. So they are really happy. And these patients get more patients. That is the biggest advantage. See, you don't have to depend on any different, different, different sorts of uh, branding or marketing, I would say. 
when the pa- one patient gets another patient, that's the best reward I feel. Yes, and that is what Holeb gives you. And uh, sir, there, there, yes, sir. <laughs> there is a myth that if we start doing the enucleation with a smaller glands, it's very difficult to reach the plane. Is it true, sir? Uh, it's not difficult to reach the plane. What happens is, see, we know that in smaller glands, somehow there is a more element of recurrent prostatitis or chronic prostatitis. So you might find places which are more sticky, difficult to enucleate, difficult to, you know, just lift that uh, nodule like what I showed. So very small glands, not a good idea to start uh, enucleation because you will feel, you know, you will also uh, feel at the back of your mind, yeah, I could have finished this in 10 minutes with TORP or BNI. <laughs> Secondly, there is a risk of bladder neck stenosis. So be careful with very small glands. Do not be aggressive with the uh, holep. And if you're doing holep, uh, now at the end of procedure, we give additional bladder neck incisions, uh, which is recommended as well to prevent uh, bladder neck stenosis. Uh, sir, uh, very small means you mean that it is around uh, 30, 40 grams? 25 to 30. 25 to 30. So ideal will be around 40 to 50 will be the uh, good uh, thing. I would say 50 to fifty to 60 grams is the ideal to start. 45 to 60 grams is the ideal to start. Yeah, uh, after we also started doing uh, enucleation in, uh, for the smaller 40, 50 grams also. Sir. Yes. Instead, we were of the opinion that it would be very difficult to do the small 40 50 grams. Now, we feel that it's very easy and the patient also benefits more better than uh, dissection. So, any patient, I know, see, don't take it as a statement per se. So, don't take it uh, like that. But any enucleation will give you better flow rates than most of the dissections. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, some few questions, sir. Actually, uh, so what will be your uh, this post-op uh, protocol, sir? When will you remove the catheter or irrigations and everything, sir? So, see, uh, removing the catheter is a personal uh, choice when you want to remove. We have removed as early as next day morning for many patients. Uh, but as a protocol in our department, uh, most of the times we take it out at third or fifth day, uh, depending on the size of prostate. There is no specific reason behind that. If there's a large fossa, if there is some undermining, a little bit of capsular perforation, then we like to keep it for five days or so. Right. They go home and they come back after five yes. days. They come they... back after five days at nine o'clock in the morning. The room yes. is designated. They get the catheter removed. They are warned before only that three things they should expect that they will happen. One, they can have dysuria. Second, they can have uh, a little bit of hematuria. Third, they can have some incontinence in the beginning. So then, you know, even if it doesn't happen, they are happy. If it happens, they are not, you know, very uh, apprehensive or very uh, worried because we tell them that this will go away with time. Sir, what are uh, last few two questions, sir? What what are the most uh, serious and uh, complication you note you went through during enucleation? Hold it. Serious. Uh, serious complication. One case I have had uh, fluid in the peritoneum. Reason, I don't know. <laughs> there was no bladder perforation. Uh, probably from somewhere around uh, from the capsule and somewhere it seeped into the uh, bladder and we had to aspirate that. One case, uh, we have had bad sepsis. Okay. Again, but that fellow was, uh, uh, he had uh, some chest issues also and other things also. One of my patients has required a sling also. And uh, one more might. So the, then this is two out of uh, thousands. So no, any morselation mors- injuries, sir? Morselation, at the most, I have injured, uh, once I have injured the orifice. I uh, mentioned that in my last uh, pure session also. Uh, this was during beginning of my, uh, other than that, maybe some 10 or 15 times we have caught hold of the bladder. Uh, but that's generally just a mucosal or submucosal uh, uh, catch. And once you release the pressure, it is released. I've never had a full thickness uh, bladder perforation uh, so far. That's what. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Then uh, we're almost nearly uh, 50 minutes. We have through that time. Thank yes. you for your uh, good, crisp talk, sir. So that most of the juniors who have seen today, they might get inspired by your talk and your videos, and they'll, they'll also start doing the enucleation, whether it is holep or tuplet, no issues.
in today's date and time, we have to learn enucleation. We have to, have to, have to. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, calling you, for, expecting you very shortly in another uh, topic again uh, about uh, enucleation, sir. That would be great. Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Manas. Sir, sir. Ah, Rajendra. Anta Bajar again, sir. Achcha, sir. Ah. Hello. Sir. Ah, uh, Kachcha, sir. Ah. 